Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fortress of Solitude. Let's head back on into Beast World with Beast World Issue 5 by Tom Taylor, Ivan Reyes and Eduardo Pansica. The Titans take the fight to Amanda Waller as her newly established Bureau of Sovereignty launch a military strike against a million of the Beast people around the world. I loved all of the stuff with Waller this issue and like last issue it's about time she became the main through line threat for this event which she should have been kind of all along and not just in the back half of the event, all her setup should have been done before this event kicked off. Wallow is up to her usual Waller tricks this issue, framing Chester Runkers, an American hero who sacrificed himself to kill Beast Boy, using his death as a call for arms for the people around the world to go against the heroes. Taylor got all of the little things about Waller right here, I just loved how she's taken control of everything, she's gotten everything she's always wanted so she doesn't really care what people like the president think about what she is doing and only just just kind of waves him off and says you can just take the success she wants the actual work and she wants to actually do the good work she doesn't care about the success or anything or people knowing that she was the one behind it all i really liked waller's later speech to nightwing about how the people nowadays they don't want heroes and maybe at one point they did but now they just want to be told what to do where to go who to like and who should be in charge i think there is something very real in that way of thinking thinking as something very real and something that we see in the real world as well and I like that that's being brought to Waller here and kind of standing behind her reasoning for wanting to get rid of the heroes because they are just a waste and people shouldn't be trusting these people who hide their identities and hide in colourful costumes and think that they can make the world a better place when really all they're doing is making it worse with each new crisis or new big event and I actually really like that there is some sort of reasoning behind why she's doing all of this and you can you can see the reasoning you can also kind of agree with it to an extent and I really like what Walla has been up to in the back pages of this book and I just wish we had more of it I just wish we had gotten to see more of it and it wasn't just relegated to backups or the back pages of night terrors and all the stuff in the background I, I wish we had gotten more of it in the lead up to this event Waller's plans on drone striking the Beast People puts the Titans in a really difficult position. As Cyborg tells the team he can hack and disable the drones, but in doing so it means going against the US military, which would make them appear like villains who are getting revenge for one of their own being killed. Nightwing takes control of the situation and decides to talk things out with Waller, using the rest of the Titans as his contingencies for if and when she disagrees with his pleas. The book here takes some focus over onto Raven in the wake of Garfield's death and rightly so. She's extremely angry with Walla at what she has done and she has the power to end Walla and wants to. However, she promised Beast Boy that she wouldn't take any violent action against her or the others doing all of this and she wants to honour Garfield's last wish. All the parts with her and Donna talking it out and planning on honouring Garfield's wishes is just fantastic character growth but everything else about it isn't really that good as Raven's story actually ties in with a big reveal at the end of this issue, which is Dr. Fate's identity. Nightwing confronts Waller and after a really comical fight with Peacemaker that takes advantage of the villain's silly helmet, Dick is forced to go with Victor's plan and take over the drones, ending Waller's threat. However, she had bet on Nightwing doing this and thus the entire world is now against the Titans and the heroes. Waller's new partner in crime, Dr. Hate, turns up and after some kind of janky dialogue about control and chaos, it's actually revealed that they are the demonic aspect of Raven, who has somehow gotten out of the gem Raven has in her forehead and become a physical entity, taking on the Helm of Hate as well as the Nightmare Stone and working with Walla. I said in my last review, whoever Hate ends up being will be a letdown, and I was right. This is a real letdown, and it's not so much that it didn't make sense, since I can see what Taylor is doing. This is Raven's bottled up Hate sort of being manifested in this physical entity that she has to combat and overcome. I think that's quite interesting, it's just that there was no actual build up to that. Dr. Hate it itself as a character had no real build up, just kind of appeared at the end of the Night Terrors when they got the Helm of Hate, put it on and they just appeared, and then they just appeared every now and then up until this event started. But there was no actual character building with that character, they just kept saying the same things over again about how when the Titans find out who they are they're going to be really surprised and they're really not. That's 
surprised at all. The same can be said about Raven's side of things. There was no hint that she could feel that something was off or missing about her or her gem or anything. There was none of that build up that was needed. Makes me wonder if maybe the Dr. Hate identity was someone else altogether and was changed pretty late on in development or at least it was meant to be revealed a lot sooner than it actually was. Maybe they were meant to start the event being already outed. Ivan Reyes returns for this issue along with Eduardo Pansica and like his previous issues it's all really great stuff. I don't understand why Lucas Meyer couldn't stay on for the last two issues. Maybe he was busy with the upcoming Nightwing stuff but I like that there is still a consistency between his art and Ivan and Eduardo's art. It all looks fantastic. This issue was very character focused, very dialogue heavy so it was a lot of capturing characters emotions which Ivan does really well. Pansica is part of the issue was the cool Peacemaker fight with Nightwing and I love the visual gag of Peacemaker's helmet being used as a weapon against him and being used in his downfall. The fight itself was visualized really well as well. It, it, it flowed really well from panel to panel and I really like that in fights because sometimes they can end up just being a mess of characters, body parts flying here and there but Eduardo makes the action look really great. Beast World's penultimate issue, while largely good thanks to his focus on characters like Walla, Nightwing, Wing and Raven really failed in its big cliffhanger reveal, if only because the setup to it felt non-existent, thus the reveal doesn't feel very impactful or even really earned. Here's hoping the finale can stick the landing and bring the event to at least a competent, coherent ending. I'm going to give this issue a 7 out of 10. 